Film Digital's Super 8 film transfer system includes the following. A projector modified by Film Digital to run at 16.66 frames per second instead of 18 frames per second. A speed controller for fine adjustment of the speed to avoid remaining flicker and an LED kit that, depending on the version, can also be used to continuously control the color temperature and not just the brightness. The settings can be saved. The most important component of film digital equipment is the lens, which includes a C-mount ring for horizontal and vertical alignment of the image and a focus ring for very fine adjustment of the focus. The rough focus is adjusted beforehand by moving the lens back and forth in the optics slot. With adapter parts, which are supplied with the optics to fit your photo or film camera, you create a stable connection with a perfect optical axis between the projector and the camera. Here, the Panasonic Lumix GH5 Mark II. Now, turn on the manual video mode, set a 50th of a second shutter speed, set the white balance to sun, and the transfer can begin. Scans in 4K here, 3840 by 2160 pixels, are contemporary and provide a lot of details. The Lumix GH5, even in its first versions GH5 and GH5S, in a way has a special position among cameras because it's a hybrid model that is equally intended for photography and filming. But what differences between the Mark I and Mark II are relevant to film transfer? Many of the features are identical to the previous model, but some innovations also affect digitization with the film digital system. The sensor has been improved, as it now has an anti-reflective coating that increases the dynamic range. The dynamic range, in particular, plays a major role in film transfer if you later want to restore the colors with the help of editing software. Unlimited time recording in 4K mode was also a unique characteristic of the first Lumix GH5 in its class. In addition to MP4, the GH5 Mark II also offers high-quality QuickTime Movie in various resolutions and frame rates, with 422 or 420 in a maximum of 10 bits. The maximum video format has increased to 4992 by 3744 pixels. But now, the video function has taken a step forward because a V-Log is already pre-installed on the Mark II. This means that, if desired, you can record with a very flat color profile, which later offers all the possibilities for color editing in post-processing. For example, if you're a color grading professional who works with DaVinci Resolve. But there are also pre-installed cinema-like presets on the Mark II that can be used to create different looks. The GH5 Mark II is also well suited for our frame-by-frame -frame upgrade, which will be released in fall and winter of 2021-22. Using an easy-to-install frame-by-frame trigger and slower projector drive, you'll also be able to work in photo mode instead of just video mode as before. You'll then be able to trigger an image automatically from each frame. By choosing an electronic shutter, the camera will be spared. Trips with electronic shutter are not counted in shutter count softwares. We record here via USB directly on the computer using Panasonic's Lumix Tether software. You can use the USB port to power the GH5 Mark II if you're not using it to connect to a PC or Mac. This feature is new to the Mark II. Here's a summary of the Lumix GH5 Mark II improvements relative to Super 8 film transfer. First, the sensor now has a wider dynamic range. Second, a V-Log is already pre-installed. Third, 
The so-called cinema-like video presets offer different looks. Fourth, there's a wide choice of QuickTime movie formats. And fifth, the camera can be powered via USB. The Panasonic Lumix GH5 Mark II, like its previous model, is exceptionally well suited for our film transfer system, whether in near real-time application with video or later with frame-by-frame -frame upgrade. We're very excited about the Lumix GH6. If you'd like more information about film transfer, simply subscribe to this YouTube channel and sign up for our free webinar at www.filmdigital.com.